So good morning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about scientific notation. And I know you've learned a little bit about scientific notation in math. And so we're going to expand on that a little bit and apply that a little bit in science. And so when we look at scientific notation, that's basically taking a large number or a small number and making it a little easier to understand. And so, for example, um, when we talked about atoms, we did learn that atoms are extremely small. And so an ordinary penny is made up of an, a lot of atoms, but the size of those atoms are very, very small. So we have a very large number of atoms, and then those atoms are very, very small. And so it could be helpful for us to take a look at those numbers in scientific notation. If I look at them in just standard notation, you can see this number here, which is about the number of atoms that are in a penny, is kind of awkward. Um, same thing with the size of an atom. That number is you know, very, very small. And again, that would be really awkward to work with in a mathematical kind of sense. And so um, what we'll want to do is convert that number into uh, scientific notation. And so scientific notation is kind of a shorthand way of us writing these really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers. So in scientific notation, if I were to take that really, really big number of the number of atoms in a penny and write it as scientific notation, this is what that would look like. So it would be 2.0 times 10 to the 22nd power. So I know that's a big number because that, you know, 10 to the 22nd power is a positive number and it's a, you know, 22 is a pretty big number. Um, the, the size of an atom is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 8. And I know that's a small number because it's a negative, and um, that tells me it's a small number, <clears throat> and that that 8 you know, tells me that it's not super small, but it's still pretty small comparatively when I look at the units as far as being centimeters. And so a kind of a helpful hint on here would be to look at the sign of the exponent. And that's going to tell me which direction that decimal is going. So a positive exponent means that that decimal, you know, that is going to move to the right. And so that's going to be a, that number is going to get bigger. Okay. If it's a negative, that means that decimal is going to move to the left. And that means that that number is going to be pretty small. So that's just kind of a helpful hint. <clears throat> you know, it, it will give you an idea on if it's a really big number or really small number by just looking at the um, sign of that exponent. Okay. Um, another thing I want to look at is that, you know, we call this the order of magnitude. I think in math, you guys just call that the exponent but that will help tell me kind of what that number is going to happen. And so <clears throat> if I look at, say, just this part right here, that 10 to the fifth, basically what that is meaning then is I'm going to move that decimal point over, you know, uh, five places. So one, two, three, four, and five. That's, you know, one way of kind of looking at that, okay? And, and so that's kind of a helpful way that I find to look at that. So that's basic. So 10 to the fifth is basically 100,000. And then I just multiply that 100,000 then to that uh, 1.35. And then, you know, that becomes 135,000. And, and so, again, I can just kind of look at my decimal point here and move it over one, two, three four, and five different places in order to get my answer here um, of 135,000. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. If you want to think about it kind of as a mathematical problem or kind of like how we converted metric, you're just moving the decimal point over. However you find it most useful, 
is how I want to do that. And so again, I just move this decimal point over five places. Okay. And so um, when I see that as a positive five, I just think move the decimal point to the right five places. Um, oh boy, I need to erase that. Um, and so um, the to write that number then in um, standard, basically what, you know, here it's a negative number. So I know that's going to be smaller. And so I'm gonna move, what I wanna think of is moving that decimal point to the left three places. So that would be one, and then I need to add some zeros in order to give me those placeholders. So I would move, it started here, one, two, and three places to the left. And then I go ahead and put my zero here so that makes it a little easier to see that decimal point right there. Um, but then again, so I just moving that to the left three places is a great way of thinking about that. Um, if I wanted to write, say, this number um, in standard notation, even though I have a negative over here, so it's negative 2.01 times 10 to the fourth, this is what I want to pay attention to, that 10 uh, to the fourth. And so that tells me I'm going to move it to the right four places. That's kind of what I think of in my head, moving the decimal right four places. And so again, it starts right there, one, two, and then I need to add two more zeros to get the decimal point right there or moving it to the right four places. That is then negative 20,100 would be, you know, that negative in front of it doesn't change anything. The only thing that would change is if my uh, power of magnitude was a negative. So positive, move to the right, negative, move to the left. Okay. Okay. So let's do kind of an example here. So if I have 2.87 times 10 to the ninth, that 10 to the ninth tells me I'm moving to the right and I'm moving to the right nine places. So that then becomes one, two. I have seven more zeros now I need to put there to get to nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So my zero would be right there. So you can see, you know, that's a really big number. It's a lot easier to write it in scientific notation than to try to write it out like that. Okay. Um, one more example, I think. So 1.9 times 10 to the negative five, negative five, remember, move to the left, and I'm moving five places to the left. So that would be one right there. So I need to put a lot more zeros in place to move that decimal five places to the left. So started here, one, two, three, four, five. I now moved five places to the left in order to get that where it needs to be. Okay, so that was kind of how we go from scientific notation to standard notation. If I'm going from scientific notation, if I'm going from standard to scientific notation, I just do the same thing in reverse. So I have my decimal point here. And again, that's a very small number. So this is going to be a negative exponent. And I'm moving one, two, three, four. So I want my decimal point right there. So, you know, my number should be anywhere from, say, 0 to 10. So this is going to be 8.11 is how I want that to start. So I'm going to move that decimal point to get the number between 1 and 10. And so that could be um, 8.11 is where I kind of want to start. And I moved that decimal point one, two, three, four places over. Okay. And so, you know, that would be times 10 to the fourth then. So my decimal point moves to the left. 
So I'm changed. So the exponent will be negative in order for that to, to uh, fit in. So I moved it four places to the left. And so writing that as scientific notation is going to be 8.11 times 10 to the negative four, because I that's the way I moved it over. So again, I just do the same kind of operation, but I do it in reverse. Um, and then I can actually uh, check my answer by just doing the same thing again. So I move it back one, two, three, four. I then can double check my answer that I got it correct. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you some time to kind of work on some practice here. Um, uh, if best thing to do would be just to pause the video, do these five problems, and then, uh, you know, just uh, come back and check your answer. So again, stop the video, take some time to work through these examples, and we'll check our answers here in a sec. Pause the video. Okay, so the first one, I, my decimal point started here and it was positive, so I'm moving that to the right. So that'd be one, two, three, four. So it's 17,200. Number two was negative, so that should be a small number. My decimal point started here one, two, three places over to the left. These were already in standard. I wanted to make them into scientific notation. So this one I moved over one, two, three, and it was a small number. So it's 5.3 times 10 to the negative three. And then this one was 5.7 times 10 to the seventh. So again, it started uh, my decimal point started here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And then as kind of a quick little check here, human body has about uh, 5.6 times 10 to the six microliters of blood. To write that in scientific notation, that would be five, um, five million six hundred thousand microliters of blood. Okay, so now go ahead and pause the video. Um, the way this puzzle works is you'll start up here where it says start, and you want to then convert that into scientific notation, and then pick the path that has the correct scientific notation. So I automatically know that it's going to be a small number, so it's going to be a negative exponent, because this is a very small number. And I'm moving my decimal point over one, two, three, four, five, six places. So it should be six times 10 to the six. So this is the path that I want to take. So that is the path that I want to follow to get to the next one. So this one is a big number. Um, I automatically know that it's going to be 4.8 nine something, okay? And of my choices here, I wanna go ahead and try to find that next choice. My decimal is right there, one, two, three, four. I moved it over four places, so this is the path that I wanna take. So then I have 4.8. What would that be then in scientific notation? So um, you'll just go ahead and finish that. Um, when you're done, use this chart to kind of check your answers. So um, pause the video, close, you know, close your iPad, see how much of that you can complete on your own, and then use this to check your answer. Um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can email me and uh, or we can go over it on Wednesday. Thank you so much.